All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson 21. And in this lesson, students are gonna continue using the visual models to add uh, two fractions uh, by finding like denominators or common denominators. We're not quite at the standard algorithm yet, but we are getting closer. And in this lesson, students, we're removing some scaffolding that students have been using in previous lessons as we get incrementally closer to that standard algorithm. Parents and teachers, the best you can, try and resist just jumping straight to that standard algorithm because these lessons are really designed to develop understanding for our students so that when we do teach them the algorithm, uh, they'll be ready for it. So let's get started. So we're going to use, let's see, a tape diagram to represent our fractions. And then uh, they're suggesting, and we're gonna, you're gonna see that we're gonna need it. Uh, we're gonna have to decompose our answer so that we can, oops, no, decompose one of the tape diagrams to get, oh, that's to get common denominators uh, here. Uh, they're, they're, gonna t they're telling us that we're gonna have to use number bonds to um, write each number as a mixed uh, write each sum as a mixed number. So basically they're telling us our answer is going to be larger than one. And that's kind of a giveaway, but that's okay. So let's do this problem A. And problem A we can see is we've got seven-eighths and one-fourth. And we're supposed to be using tape diagrams. And so we're going to draw seven-eighths and we're going to draw one-fourth. And we need to draw the exact same tape diagram for both, right? And the best I can, and that's horrible, but I'm trying, um, they're, they're pretty close, right? Uh, and so there we go. There are our two uh, tape diagrams. And first, let's do 7 eighths. So I'm going to cut that into 8 pieces, because that's what the denominator says. And then I'm going to shade in 7 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then let's cut in this one into fourths. And then I'm going to shade in one of those fourths. Now, parents and teachers, our students need the opportunity to think which one of these tape diagrams are they going to decompose so that we can get common denominators or like units. And of course, we want our students to see that we want to decompose this one into smaller units so that we can have common units or like units. And if we cut each one of those fourths into two pieces, we now have eighths. So that means instead of having um, one fourth, we now have two eighths. So instead of having one fourth, we now have two eighths. So our new number sentence becomes seven eighths plus two eighths, which is equal to nine eighths. And now what we need to do is we need to use a number bond. So I'm going to go down here, nine, nine eighths, and we to uh, write that mixed number. So we th remember that nine eighths is eight eighths plus one eighth. And this eight eighths is equal to one whole, plus that extra one eighth left over. So nine eighths is equal to 1 and 1 eighth. Parents and teachers, I'm going to leave it up to you to do problem B. So in this set of problems, it's the same as the previous slide, only this time they want us to use a number line to model the addition rather than a tape diagram. And so the first thing we're going to do, and let's do problem A here, is we have to estimate, and is this answer going to be larger than one whole or less than one whole? And we can see that it's going to be larger than one whole. So we're going to draw our number line and we're going to start from zero and we're going to go up to two, which means one's going to be right there in the middle. And then we need to draw, I, I suggest, that we draw the fraction that has the largest units first. So does the half have the larger units or are eighths larger? Well, halves are larger than eighths, so we're going to draw that half first. So let's cut everything into halves and we see that one half is right here. So we're going to start right here at a half and now we need to go five-eighths more. We're going to make a little hop of five-eighths. Now how do we turn these halves 
into eighths. Well, the way we turn a half into eighths is we cut each half into four pieces. And now we have eighths, because you can see from zero to one is now cut into eight pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to continue that same process over here, cut these halves, that half into four pieces, and this half into four pieces. And so there we go. We've now cut everything into eighths. Now from here, from a half, we can add five eighths. So that's going to be, let's see, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to go right there. So we just added five eighths. So there's our one half plus five eighths. And where do we end up here? Well, there's a couple of ways we can think of it. We can think of it as, oh, we right here is one whole plus one eighth, because here's one whole plus we have an extra little piece um, shown up. And then, um, or another way we could think of it is, well, we could think of one half as four eighths. And then four eighths plus five eighths gives us nine eighths. So really what we could do is take this problem and in a more like standard algorithm way, parents and teachers, we could think of this as one half plus five eighths is the same thing as four eighths plus five eighths plus five eighths. And that equals 9 eighths, which is equal to 1 and 1 eighth. So there's our complete number sentence. That's down here, right here. Uh, 4 eighths plus 5 eighths equals 9 eighths, which is 1 and 1 eighth. So here we're supposed to find the sum, but they keep taking away scaffolding. And this time they say, well, draw the model only if needed. So... We're going to take a look at this first problem here, and we're going to we're going to think. Well, if we were to draw, which which fraction would we put on the number line first? Well, we would start with a half first, because halves are larger than eighths, and we start by drawing, uh, locating on the number line the fraction with the larger unit sizes, and halves are larger than eighths. So we'd first start by drawing our halves. And then we need to turn our half into eighths. And how would we do that? So we would do that by cutting each half into four pieces. So if we wanted to do this without a model, we'd say, well, one half, and we would times the one and the two by four. And that gives us four eighths. So the half that we would have drawn on our number line becomes four eighths because they're equivalent. They're the same amount. So we end up with four eighths plus six eighths. And then if we were to add those straight up, we would get ten eighths. And ten eighths is one and two eighths. How did we get that? Well, we got that because ten eighths is 8 eighths plus 2 eighths. Here is our 1, and so we have 1 and 2 eighths. Parents and teachers, if your students want to simplify this and turn this into 1 and 1 fourth, they're welcome to, but at this point we are happy with this answer is 1 and 2 eighths. Now, parents and teachers, the other thing is really highlight this. Let your students draw a model if they need to. They do not have to uh, do this totally using this straight algorithm, even though this is kind of a modified standard algorithm. They don't have to do it that way. They can continue using a model if they want. There is no need for us to rush into some sort of abstract thing that forces students into just blindly following some sort of rule. And just one last practice here. So let's start with this. Now, I know that if we were going to draw this on a number line, I would draw the fourths first, and then I would tur turn those fourths into twelfths. So I'm going to try and do this without a model, and I'd say, hmm, first I'd, draw, I'd 
locate 3 fourths on my number line. Now I need to turn this into twelfths. Well, how would I turn fourths into twelfths? Well, I'd cut them into three pieces. And that gives me nine twelfths. So really, three fourths is equal to nine twelfths. So using the standard, more official way of looking at this or making it look, I'd say four twelfths plus three fourths is the same thing as four twelfths plus nine twelfths, and that's thirteen twelfths, and that's equal to one and one twelfth. Now, parents and teachers, how do we, how did we go from this improper fraction to this mixed number? This is a little you know unique compared to the way we were taught when we were kids, but. 13 twelfths is 12 twelfths plus 1 twelfth. And we know that 12 twelfths is equal to 1 whole. So that's how we end up with 1 and 1 twelfth. And that wraps up 4th grade module 5 lesson 21. Students are continuing to use those visual models, but we are starting to get away from those visual models and move towards the standard algorithm.